A player's nickname can tell you a lot about them. Tom Brady is referred to as the GOAT for obvious reasons. Marshawn Lynch is called Beast Mode for the physicality he brings to the field. And Deion Sanders is known as Primetime due to his play on the big stage. But there's one player whose nickname embodies him better than no other. T.Y. Hilton, who is known as the Ghost due to the fact that when defenses finally see him, it's too late, he's already past them. This is pointedly true considering how dominant Hilton has been. But the moniker of the Ghost could also be applied to his experience at the 2012 NFL Draft, when it was obvious NFL executives were too scared to draft him. Hilton fell to the third round, and in the process, saw 12 receivers come off the board before him. Now in today's video, I'd like to take a look at who these 12 receivers are and how their careers have turned out. But first, let's take a look at T.Y.'s journey to become the Ghost. T.Y. is from the Miami area, and he played high school football at Miami Springs High School. While there, he was dominant on offense as a receiver and on special teams as a returner, but not good enough to warrant attention from some of the big-time college football programs. And on the night before National Signing Day, with T.Y.'s two choices being whittled down to West Virginia and Florida International, he placed a West Virginia hat and an FIU hat in front of his son and told him to crawl to one. After Hilton's son crawled to the FIU hat eight times in a row, T.Y. committed there. When Hilton arrived at Florida International in 2008, he became a starter from day one and never looked back. In his four years at FIU, T.Y. broke almost every receiving record, as he left with the most receptions, yards, and touchdowns in school history. Following his illustrious college career, he declared for the 2012 NFL Draft. In the evaluation process, scouts were impressed with his speed and agility, but were concerned with his lack of strength and size, causing him to fall all the way to the Colts of the 92nd overall pick in the third round. And since being drafted, the undersized kid from FIU has been on a tear. Since his rookie year in 2012, T.Y. has totaled 507 receptions for 8,097 yards and 40 touchdowns, which ranks him 8th in receptions, 4th in yards, and 17th in touchdowns out of all NFL players since 2012. Pretty good numbers for a guy who had 12 receivers drafted before him. Now, let's see who these guys are and how their careers have turned out. So the first wide receiver off the board in 2012 is Justin Blackman, who went to the Jaguars with a 5th overall selection. Coming out of Oklahoma State, Blackman wasn't just a great college wide receiver, he was one of the greatest ever. Between 2010 and 2011, Justin was the most dominant player in college football. Winning the Bolitnikoff Award in both these years, he put together 111 catches for 1,782 yards and 20 touchdowns in 2010, and 122 catches for 1,522 yards and 18 touchdowns in 2011. Following this dominance, Blackman declared for the draft. In the evaluation process, scouts thought he played a lot like Anquan Bolden and loved his red zone jump ball ability, which was enough to convince the Jaguars to trade up and draft him. In Justin's first year in Jacksonville, he put up 64 catches for 865 yards and 5 touchdowns, which was a pretty good start, but what's even more impressive is that he did this with Blaine Gabbard as his quarterback. To really see Justin's potential, check out this play from his rookie year. Yeah, this guy had skills, but unfortunately for him, 2012 was the end of the line, as his drinking problems began to catch up to him and he only played in 4 games in 2013. Blackman hasn't played another down since then, due to various suspensions, so given a second chance here this is a no brainer and the Jaguars select Hilton. Now for the second receiver drafted before TY, Michael Floyd to the Cardinals with the 13th overall pick. Playing college football at the University of Notre Dame, Floyd had a solid career. 
going over a thousand yards in both his junior and senior seasons. But the main reason he was drafted so high was due to scouts' projections of Floyd's game at the next level. The thought was that Floyd possessed all the measurables and traits of a number one receiver. But due to various issues, Floyd has never been that number one guy. In Arizona, he constantly showed flashes, making the occasional splash play, and even went over a thousand yards in 2013. But the main problem with Floyd is he's been plagued with the same drinking issues that sunk Justin Blackman's career. And after his second DUI since his college days, he was cut by the Cardinals in late 2016 and was picked up by the Patriots. And other than one game versus the Dolphins, he didn't contribute much. Since being cut by the Patriots, he's bounced around the league to a few teams and is currently a backup for the Ravens. If you're going to draft a receiver in the first round, you should expect more than only 1,000 yard season, making this an easy decision for the Cardinals given a second chance. And imagine T.Y. teaming up with Larry. Now for the third receiver drafted before Hilton, Kendall Wright to the Titans with the 20th overall pick. Wright played his college football at Baylor during the RG3 era, and in his best year as a senior in 2011, when he had 108 catches for 1,663 yards and 14 touchdowns. Although a little undersized, Kendall is still considered one of the top receiver prospects in the draft due to his athletic abilities. Kendall stepped into the Titans offense in 2012 and put together a solid rookie year with 64 catches for 626 yards and 4 touchdowns. He built off of his rookie campaign in 2013 with 94 catches for 1,079 yards and 2 touchdowns. But this turned out to be Wright's peak, as he would never have another season over 1,000 yards. Since leaving the Titans after 2016, he's had short stints with the Bears, Vikings, and Cardinals, and is currently a free agent. This is another easy decision here. The Titans would have taken Hilton given a second chance. And now, for the fourth receiver before T.Y. Hilton, A.J. Jenkins to the San Francisco 49ers with the 30th overall pick. The final receiver drafted in the first round, Jenkins is probably one of the most disappointing first round picks of all time. Playing his college ball at the University of Illinois, A.J. had his best year in 2011 with 90 catches for 1,276 yards and 8 touchdowns. At the combine, scouts fell in love with his elite speed, but he was still only considered a mid to late round pick. But unfortunately for the 49ers, they fell for the speed trap and bought into the hype by selecting him in the first round. So far, Jenkins has been one of the biggest busts in recent memory. In his rookie year for the 49ers, he only had one ball thrown his way, which he dropped. And following one of the worst rookie seasons imaginable, he was traded to the Chiefs where things got exponentially better. And by that, I mean he finally caught a few passes. In his two years in Kansas City, he barely saw the field, and he hasn't played a down in the NFL since 2014. To really see how much better T.Y. has been than A.J., let's take a look at Hilton's stat line versus the Chiefs in the 2013 wildcard round versus Jenkins' entire career. In this game, Hilton totaled 13 catches for 224 yards and 2 touchdowns, compared to A.J.'s career where he's totaled 17 catches for 223 yards and 0 touchdowns. Yeah, this is a pretty easy choice for the 49ers, and now imagine Hilton on some of those early 2010's 49ers teams. Now for the 5th receiver selected before T.Y. Brian Quick to the then St. Louis Rams of the first pick in the second round. Quick played college football at Appalachian State, where he dominated the relatively easy FCS competition with a 6-4 frame and 4-4-7 speed. But he was far from a perfect prospect as scouts worried about his lack of explosiveness. But the height-speed combo is enough to convince the Rams to select him pretty high in the draft. And so far he's been extremely underwhelming as a pro, considering that in 7 years for the Rams and Redskins, he's only had 1 year over 500 yards. And the only notable thing he's done in his career is being the first Los Angeles Rams to score a touchdown since 1994. So given another shot here, the Rams have taken Hilton. And for the six receivers selected before Hilton, Stephen Hill to the Jets with the 43rd overall pick. Hill is just another one of the many busts from this list. He played college football at Georgia Tech, where he never had elite production with his best season being 2011, when as a junior, he had 28 catches for 820 yards and 5 touchdowns. At the Combine, scouts viewed him as an elite deep threat due to his 4-3-6 40-yard dash. But the issue with Steven is that that was all he could do. And when he went to the New York Jets, it was one of the worst possible scenarios, as his quarterbacks there were Mark Sanchez and Geno Smith. While being held back by poor quarterback play, Hill could never develop into the deep threat he had the potential to be. And after 2013, he was cut by the Jets. Since then, he's briefly been with the Panthers, Toronto Argonauts, and Atlanta Legends. Now looking back on it, it's pretty easy to say what deep throat the Jets would have taken here. Now for the 7th wide receiver taken before T.Y. 
Alshon Jeffrey to the Bears in round two with the 45th overall pick. Jeffrey played his college football at the University of South Carolina, where he had three exceptional seasons there. With his best as a sophomore in 2010 when he had 88 catches for 1,517 yards and 9 touchdowns. NFL teams projected him to have elite jump ball and red zone ability at the next level, which caused the Bears to draft him even though they already had Brandon Marshall. So far as a pro, Jeffrey has been extremely productive, and I think his play speaks for itself. <laughs> Alshon has definitely established himself as the best wide receiver pick before T.Y., but I still view Hilton as the superior player and I think that the Bears would have taken him here over Jeffrey. And for the 8th receiver selected before Hilton, Ryan Broyles to the Lions with the 54th overall pick. Broyles is a unique case. Playing at the University of Oklahoma, he was one of the most storied wide receivers in college football history as between 2008 and 2011, he posted 349 receptions and broke the then FBS career receptions record. Scouts fell in love with how football savvy he was, which led to the Lions selecting him in the second round, even though he was coming off of a torn ACL. So far, Ryan's abilities haven't translated well to the pro level, as he's only played three years in the league and was cut by the Lions before the 2015 season. Currently, Broyles is a successful real estate mogul in Oklahoma. But imagine the highlights we would have seen had Hilton had deep balls thrown to him from Stafford. Now for the ninth receiver select before T.Y. Reuben Randall to the Giants with the 63rd overall pick. Going into college, Reuben was considered the number one receiver prospect in the nation, with him receiving offers from almost every major college program. But he would ultimately decide to attend LSU. While there, he was never able to live up to the hype of being a top prospect, and his only solid year was as a junior in 2011 when he had 53 catches for 917 yards and 8 touchdowns. Originally, Randall was projected to be a first round pick, but after a disappointing performance against Alabama's talented secondary, he fell to the second round on most teams' boards. So far as a pro, Ruben has been a solid player. Although he's never had over 1,000 yards, he's put up solid numbers in almost every single one of his seasons, and it's surprising that since he left the Giants in 2015, he hasn't been able to find another team to take him. Now, although I like Randall as a player, the Giants absolutely would have taken Hilton here. Imagine a Hilton and OBJ combo wide receiver. Okay, so the 10th receiver pick before T.Y. Hilton was Devere Posey to the Texans with the 68th overall pick. Posey played college football at Ohio State, where he had four fairly average seasons. Following his tenure at OSU, he declared for the draft. Posey was considered a third round talent, and that's exactly where he went. To sum up Posey as a pro, he was the only player from this list that I never heard of. He started out in Houston in 2012, where he had three quiet years until he was traded to the Jets, and has since bounced around to the Broncos, Ravens, and various CFL teams. His greatest achievement as a pro player thus far would be winning the MVP award for the 105th Grey Cup. The Texans definitely regret this pick and have probably lost sleep thinking about what T.Y. and Hopkins could have done together. Alright, and now for the 11th receiver select before T.Y. TJ Graham in the third round of the Bills with the 69th overall pick. TJ went to college at NC State, where he set the ACC record for kickoff return yards, which had NFL scouts talking about his return abilities as the best part of his game. And obviously the Bills thought this was enough to use a third round pick on him. As a pro, Graham has struggled. He's only averaged 1.29 catches per game and has struggled to stick with the team. After leaving the Bills in 2014, he was with the Jets, Saints, Panthers, Eagles, Titans, and similar to Posey played in the CFL. Needless to say, TJ ain't no TY. And this is a pretty big whiff by the Bills, considering that they're always in need of some explosive players to add on to their usually anemic offense, and TY would have been just what the doctor ordered. Finally, for the 12th and final receiver drafted before TY Hilton, Mohamed Sanu to the Bengals with the 83rd pick in the third round. Sanu played college football at Rutgers, where he did it all. Catching, throwing, and rushing for touchdowns, he was a threat to score from anywhere on the field, and scouts were salivating at Sanu's potential as a fearless receiver. But were worried about his lack of speed and the fact that he was virtually non-existent in the deep passing game, which led to him falling to the third round. Once in Cincinnati, Muhammad started out fast, with this being his first touchdown.
Following 2012, Sanu would improve his totals almost every year in Cincinnati. In 2016, Sanu signed with the Falcons to create one of the best offenses in the league, and he almost bailed the Falcons out from their 28-3 collapse. Currently, he's part of a dynamic wide receiver trio, with him, Julio Jones, and Calvin Ridley, and is probably the second or third best wide receiver from this list. Yet, Sanu is still an inferior player in almost every aspect to Hilton, making this an easy choice for the Bengals given another shot. And imagine what an AJ Green and T.Y. Hilton duo could have done together to NFL defenses. Of all the guys taken before T.Y., we've seen quite an assortment of players. Everything from Pro Bowl receivers to wasted talent to absolute bust. But if one lesson regarding Hilton's success compared to his fellow prospects sticks out, it's the saying that it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog.